Thus I come, thus I come in this hour, my bodhisattvas with me. We descend and we lower into congruency in this place for these hours of the celebration of the independence, the declaration of independence of the original colonies, the Tushita heaven. This, beloved, is an act of desire, for it is the desire of the bodhisattvas. It is the desire of Lord Maitreya to descend into this octave when the earth should have realized a golden age and sustained it for 500 years. We desire to see them take incarnation. You desire to see them walk among you. Therefore, the desire from above and the desire from below has allowed this action to take place, that you might understand that the entire earth is intended to be locked into the etheric octave, but instead the astral plane does blot it out. Happy are ye then who have kept the flame in the heart of our inner retreat, fully mindful and aware of the western Shambhala that surrounds you. Happy are ye who return to this place yearly as an annual pre-celebration to your own victory of your ascension in the light. This is the pilgrimage to the Western Shambhala. I remind you that your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took his ascension from the Eastern and the original Shambhala. Thus, East and West, the devotees mount the 33-tiered spiral staircase that will ultimately bring you to the all-seeing eye of God, your own mighty I Am Presence. I am Gautama Buddha, your Lord and the Lord of the world, and I am most grateful to be speaking to you on this day of days. Won't you then be seated midst the bodhisattvas who count you fellow bodhisattvas on the path and desire to lend you the very magnetism of their auras that you might keep and strengthen and intensify that auric emanation of your own holy Christ self. Therefore, let us understand and receive the meditation of the rings of the causal body, the mighty spheres of light. O oh, most beloved ones, if you are one day to enter into the congruency of the great Dharmakaya, into the heart of hearts of the I am that I am, you will then know and be in the presence of those great and mighty spheres of the causal body of God. Now then, by way of magnetizing that which is above below, let us begin to realize and to visualize these rings. First, let us see them as flat rings that are horizontal, therefore extending from your heart chakra. Visualize these rings one upon the other as you look at the great causal body on the chart of the presence above me. See these rings as extending, beloved. See them going out. See the fiery power of the white, the yellow, the pink. 
the violet, the purple, the green, and the blue. See that mighty action, beloved ones, and know that each day as you fill in those rings, by action, by prayer, by determination, by will, by all that you do to the glory of God, then you will know that as above, so below, you are becoming that auric emanation of your God and of myself. Every ascended master lives in the Dharmakaya, in the mighty I Am Presence, and we see to it that each and every day we are extending and expanding and strengthening and intensifying the power, wisdom, and love of the spheres of our causal body. I have extended my causal body to include planet Earth, and far beyond, and therefore I hold within my very body, within my very being and consciousness, and within the very bliss of my being, all evolutions who are abiding in the earth and in other planes of the earth. This is my assignment, beloved ones, and I concentrate upon it, for I am the Lord of the world in the heart of every person, every son and daughter, and every child. I am in the heart of sentient life, and I am even in the heart of the evildoer. I remain there until the last trump of defiance against God is sounded by the one who then must go before the court of the sacred fire and determine whether or not to bend the knee, and if not to bend the knee as that one has not for eons, then to find that that God within that one is cancelled out and all energy of God is purified, transmuted, and restored to the great central sun. Thus to the very moment of the extinguishing of the self by the self, I, Gautama, am there to keep the flame. And if there be no flame, I substitute my aura and I extend a certain life a certain consciousness whereby there is absolutely no possibility for anyone in this universe, especially those connected with the earth body, to not be able to understand the choice whether to be or not to be in God. Thus understand, beloved, that I am in the earth. I am in my causal body in the earth. And all of these evolutions play in the fields of my consciousness day by day. I am in the center of the great Tao. I am in the center of Ain Sof, in the unmanifest as well as in the manifest. Yet what do you see as response to this nurturing of my heart? Well, beloved, you might say that it is pathetic, but I am also always hopeful. I am hopeful, beloved, because you have responded to my aura. I am hopeful because Sanat Kumara did come to earth, did call me, did raise me up for this service. This I say to you, beloved, if I might have extensions of myself in physical embodiment such as you, with brother and sister bodhisattvas accompanying you, you directly speaking to the people, you becoming on fire with a zeal of the Lord that you have not yet had, even though many of you are zealous. If I could have you speaking the word into every corner and in every point of darkness, every heart and eye with a conviction that you are planting another seed of the Buddha that shall go and merge with the inner seed of the Buddha that is in everyone. If I can have this, beloved ones, there can be a stepping down then of my causal body and all that I am through you. There can be reaching of many more, and you can make the call to me this day and every day to dispel the false theology the false notions in every field of endeavor that people entertain and therefore cannot receive the truth when they hear it because they are indoctrinated. Understand this principle, beloved ones. I must extend myself through you, for if I do not hold myself in the place where I am that I am, 
then should the world verily collapse. Thus, as I hold my position in these octaves, and as we press in and among you this day, so I say to you, realize in the bliss and the meditation of this conference that you can be my self in form. You can invoke my causal body and my aura. You can approach everyone you meet, stranger or friend, in the vibration of Gautama Buddha. And I say, bring the gentleness, the compassion, but bring the sudden thrust of truth. For sometimes when truth is least expected, it makes its mark and drives deep into the psyche and remains there for many days and many miles until it can no longer be denied. Do you know, beloved ones, that when you plant truth in the heart and the being of an individual, that at that moment it becomes a focus for more of the momentum of truth to gather. It becomes as a lodestone, and therefore everywhere he goes, that one who has heard the truth spoken by you does bump into that truth in another form, in another manifestation, in odd places and from unusual people. So it is, beloved, a great truth is confirmed. It is confirmed by all elemental life and all of the stars and all of the great beings of light. But most of all, it is confirmed by the soul who is listening, who is listening to the Holy Christ self. I have looked at ways and means and up and down, and I have walked the earth. I am a pilgrim who has walked the earth round about so many times, I probably am the one who has most walked the earth of any pilgrim you know. For I am always interested in people. I am always interested in souls. I am always interested in placing myself in the situations they are in and then providing them with exactly what is the antidote to that situation that is so difficult and as much as the great law will allow, I place my electronic presence over them with the solution to the problem. And some see it, beloved ones. They see it immediately. They jump with delight. They are joyous, for they have found the key out of a certain dilemma that was so difficult, a knotty problem where factions of people warring against one another would find no solution to their warring to their situation. And lo and behold, the idea has struck. Beloved ones, I am no respecter of persons. It does not matter to me who gets the glory for the idea or whether it is one who is a sinner who catches that idea first. For I am one who believes in the God in everyone until that one says die, as I have already said. Therefore, beloved, try it also. When you meditate upon the world's problems, Call to me for what is the solution. Then by your invocations and decrees, call to your mighty I am presence and holy Christ self to direct that very solution as a matrix, as a sphere of light that contains the inner logos for absolute God resolution. Send these and let them be multiplied many times over these spheres of God solution and let them descend as mighty spheres of light over an area where there is corruption, where there is the slaughter of many, where there is starvation, where there is politicking, and therefore the people cannot move on with the agenda of their Holy Christ self. Beloved ones, I review the planet this day, the planet placed in my charge. I review all ascended ones, those in the etheric octaves. I review those in embodiment and those who would like to be but have been denied. If I were to tell you the greatest need of the hour, I would tell you that it is that each one become acquainted with his real self, that holy Christ self. 
If it were possible for all people to see the image on the chart of the divine self, that, beloved ones, would open the eyes of the soul for millions. That wallet-sized card on which the chart is stamped and the description on the back does reawaken souls to their original identity, to the God who is with them and in them. It is the most important single glyph of light, a photograph of the inner being, and its accuracy is such that it does recall the soul, the soul that is a million light years away from her God reality. It does call the soul back to the point of the seat of the soul chakra and to the desiring of resolution, to the worship of her God, to the invocation of the I am that I am. There is no greater gift that you can give to anyone than the understanding of their own mighty I am presence, the Holy Christ self, and the soul evolving as depicted in the lower figure in the chart, surrounded by the violet flame. The violet flame is the flame of the seventh ray Buddhas and Bodhisattvas. And should I ask for hands today, who are the Buddhas of the seventh ray and who are the Bodhisattvas of the seventh ray? Amongst those who have descended here in this place from the Tushita heaven, I tell you, one million hands would be raised in this moment. Think of it, beloved. Think of the immensity. Think of the immensity that is all, the all of the spirit and the matter cosmos. Then think of these one million and think how their causal bodies, charged with a violet flame, should fill entirely the immensity. Understand then how we at our level should have such a sense of frustration when our cups are full. We are filled with the light of the violet flame, ready to pour it into your chakras, into the chalices of your being, for anything whatsoever you desire. We are like the genies. You rub the Buddha's belly and out pours the violet flame, beloved ones. Why then take the long way around the Buddha's belly? Why then not invoke the full gathered momentum of all the causal bodies of all the beings of the seventh ray and all other beings in heaven of the violet flame and ask for it to rain upon earth for absolute God purification of this world, for the turning around of all those things which are yet the portends Oh, beloved, how do you turn a people around? How do you turn them around? In the continent of Africa, in Asia, wherever else in the world, how do you turn around AIDS and promiscuity and all of the diseases that set that beset the people while there are even this day cures for those diseases that are not even being released? I tell you how you turn it around. You remind yourself at least once a day that it is the dark ones, those spiritually wicked in high places, the fallen angels, the demons, the false hierarchies of the twelfth planet, all children of God and all sons and daughters of God, with very few exceptions, those exceptions being those who have truly taken the left-handed path. But all of them, beloved, I tell you, are of good heart, good will, and good mind. And according to what they have been taught, or how they have been indoctrinated in their systems of education, or brainwashed in their areas of religious influence, 
These individuals, mean well, they would do the best if they could see the best, if they understood the entire equation of light and darkness and good and evil, which does continue on planet Earth, I tell you they would come to the same conclusions that you have come to. And this church universal and triumphant would have millions upon millions of members worldwide. Therefore, I appeal to you this day as Lord of the world to not let your head rest upon your pillow at night until you have called for the binding and the judgment of the dweller on the threshold of this sinister force of planet Earth and the sinister force of other systems attacking planet Earth through the 12th planet and the sinister force manifest as the anti-Christ, the anti-Buddha, the anti-father, mother, the anti-child, the anti-Holy Spirit. Yes, beloved, bind evil and the evil ramifications portrayed and blown up in the media and on the sound waves and the people, at least a greater majority of the people, shall turn and serve their God. Sweet ones of my heart, as I commune with you in great tenderness, so I feel the love that is a part of you, that is the real you, that is of God. Sometimes this love has been bruised, sometimes even broken, as though your very heart should break in two. Beloved ones, I am the heart of all the Buddhas. Take refuge in my heart. What is it that causes the record to remain from this life and another, the record of pain? Pain, beloved, is necessary for one and only one purpose. When that purpose is fulfilled, the pain is no more. The pain is not actually from the hurt experienced. The pain is really the pain of your separation from God, from me, from your Holy Christ self, from your I Am Presence, from the flame that beats your heart. This is the pain. It is a pain that results from your seeking me elsewhere and not finding me and therefore being rebuffed, rejected, buffeted, bruised, put down. Blessed ones, let go of this struggle, else all of your life shall be so engaged and you shall not arrive at the gate of bliss that you are seeking. My heart is the open door of bliss. Seek my heart early. Seek it late. Seek it in the day. Give the simple mantra, Om Mani. Padme Hum. This wondrous mantra, also known of Kuan Yin, celebrates your soul, your spirit, your Atman, as the jewel in the heart of the lotus, the chakra of the heart. O oh, blessed ones, unless you nourish the relationship to me, and to all others serving with me and to your presence. You will continue to experience the pain of isolation, of separation, of aloneness. These things are illusion. 
They are illusion, beloved ones. Beware illusion and Maya, for it has entrapped some of you for many embodiments. Be willing to take your sword and cut through the Mayak veil as though sundering some precious silk or garment of apparel. Keep on slashing the veils, keep on slashing the veils, slash through until you come to the very end of the Mayak universe, and you shall behold the reality of your not-self, and you shall faint in the presence of angels who will catch you when you see the unreality, the unreal self, and the unreal self, the dweller on the threshold of the planet. And when you are revived, you will also be shown your great God self. And you shall see that you are naked, you are not clothed, you are not rich, you are not accomplished. You are nothing but a soul, a soul that is the potential to make the choice to become the all or to forsake the all for all of these unrealities. All of these things. Now, beloved, bliss is not very far from you. It is as close as your breath and my breath my breath that I breathe unto you now is the breath of bliss. And the only true bliss is the bliss of the union of your soul in God. I am the aura of that God presence. So are the bodhisattvas and Buddhas with me, the aura of that God presence. Now drink in the bliss of your union. You are changing, beloved. The earth is changing through this retreat. See how causes set in motion here shall become the beautiful, fruitful, flowering trees of life. See how you are bonded to the bodhisattvas and in knowing them as brother and sister at your side. How you too shall choose that path without any sense of loss, any sense that there is something here and something there and something over here that you must first go and do and go and experience, and then, and then, and then, as the road leads on to another and another, one day, someday, you say, I shall sit at the feet of the Buddha. Well, I wish you had eternity, but you do not. You have this life, and in so far as the law is concerned, and in so far as you know, you do not have another. I say this because until you are granted another incarnation, you have no certitude whatsoever that you will have another opportunity. The law does count the opportunities given to each one. 
when so many are turned down because they are so easy, as though your soul were approached by a suitor day after day, and you tired of him and did not take seriously his offers. And then one day, the repetition of his coming would stop. And all of a sudden you would say, where has my suitor gone? And the suitor would be gone forever. So does God pursue the soul. So does the guru pursue the soul. Know this, O oh, beloved ones, that there comes a day and it is an exact moment, and it is calculated when God and angels and ascended masters have pursued the soul for the last time. Now the soul must turn around and must chase after all of these great ones who are dissolving into higher octaves, and in order to be with them, the soul must put on a filigree veil upon veil upon veil to mount the higher octaves. And if she is not able, for she has not taken and applied the teaching, then the gates close, the vision is gone, the higher octaves are sealed, and she wanders again the earth. Only God knows how many lifetimes. Yes, beloved, it is my key announcement to you today. I want you to live every day of the rest of your life with the conviction that you have but one life. Of this life you are certain, for you are here and now in physical embodiment. You cannot be certain of any other. I wish you to accept this bent of the mind, this cast of the mind, therefore eliminating all procrastination, beloved ones. For some of you who are young, think you have many years ahead, do not assume it. When it comes down to it, all that is guaranteed to you each day is the sun rises on that day. And at the end of that day, the sun sets. Thus contemplate this mystery, beloved. It comes under the law of the one. One universe of God is a portion to you each day. It is a raindrop become a universe. What you do in that universe is stamped on your record permanently. Permanently when it is good, permanently when it is not until you erase that karmic record. Understand the realities of human existence and realize that there is no such thing as a reality of human existence. Human existence is maya, it is illusion. And the only thing real about this existence is your daily contact with God and your expanding of the flame in the heart. Your Atman is real, but you are not yet your Atman. Your soul is a living potential, but only a potential. Therefore, see how precarious is the way and know how firm is the manifestation of the bodhisattvas in your midst right now who are absolutely and totally one with the cosmic Christ, the universal Christ, and their own Christhood, dazzling in their golden robes, dazzling in the white fire of their hearts. I say, look at them. See yourself in the mirror as one of them, as yourself now transformed into the great image of the blessed male and female followers of the Buddha. Yes, beloved ones, seek to be real. Seek to be real. Seek to be real. I am real and I expect 
the extensions of myself, namely you, to have at least a portion of yourself that is absolutely real and is absolutely qualified with God reality every day of the rest of this life. I speak sternly to you, beloved ones. I speak sternly because I am determined to wake you up. Therefore I say, awake, O oh bhikkhus. Awake by the power of Helios and Vesta. Awake by the thunder that descends from Mount Horeb. Awake, awake, awake. You silly ones who waste your time in chatter when a mantra could be flowing from your lips. If you desire to have and to hold this land as the Buddha land, as the focus of the pure land, then I say to you and I skip not one of you, you must rise and you must rise to the level of the mantra for there you will find all of the other devotees and disciples reciting the mantra and when you are at the level of the mantra beloved ones then then you strengthen the antakarana of your ashram rituals then you will see how strong you are as a body of god one contacting the other by the sounding of the great mantras. Therefore, let the mantras recited by the messenger with others be published abroad. Let them be heard, let them resound in the canyons of being. Let them be directed into the electronic belt. Let the mantra overtake you, I say, for the mantra is God. You are God, therefore let you, God and the mantra, come together every day of your life. I am Gautama, I will watch you. You have had many instructions from many masters, but I will not allow you to fail to give the mantra daily. Therefore heed me. For if I do not have obedience from every one of you and all who hear me, I will be back and I will tell you what is the karma of disobedience to the Lord of the world. Gautama Buddha, I am. Let us respond to Lord Gautama with immediate obedience. Let our musicians lead us with
Thank you.